Okay, so in this video, we will look at limits and factoring. So here's the first example. We consider the rational function x squared plus 2x minus 24 over negative x squared negative x plus 30 as x approaches negative 6. As always, when considering a limit, we look at what kind of case we're dealing with. As x goes to negative 6, x squared goes to 36. 2 times x goes to negative 12. Negative 12, negative 24 is negative 36, which gives us 0. So our numerator is shrinking to 0 as x approaches negative 6. Same thing here, positive 36, but negative, so negative 36. Negative, negative 6 is positive 6. And so we get negative 30 plus 30 is also 0. So we have a 0 over 0 in determinate case. So as x is approaching negative 6, both our numerator and denominator are shrinking to 0. So it's not clear what's going to happen. Something very small over something very small, as we'll see in multiple examples, can really yield just about anything. But we have a piece of information. Both polynomials are 0 when x is negative 6. So we can here, we can use the 0 theorem. Imagine f of x being your polynomial, because f of negative 6 is equal to 0, a free factor is x minus the 0, which is negative 6, and this is simply x plus 6. So both quadratic polynomials have a factor of x plus 6, so we can use that to factor them. Before we factor, though, it's easier when you have a a uh, positive multiple of your quadratic term, so we'll factor the negative sign from this quadratic polynomial. And then we'll use the sum and product trick to factor both our quadratic polynomials. The factor of this is x plus 6. x plus 6 times what? Well, the product must be negative 24, and so this must be negative 4. The sum must be 2. 6 plus negative 4 is 2. Check. Leave the negative up front. A free factor is x plus 6 as before. Some product trick. What times 6 is negative 30? Well, negative 5. The sum, 6 plus negative 5 is positive 1. Check. So now we have factored both our polynomials. And now think of it. As x is approaching negative 6, x is getting closer and closer to negative 6, but never exactly negative 6. Since x is never exactly negative 6, then x plus 6 is never exactly 0. And so we can cancel x plus 6 on top and bottom. And now we're left with a much simpler expression. x minus 4 on the numerator over negative of x minus 5. So we had an indeterminate case of 0 over 0. We factored, we simplified. Now we have a new limit. So we look at our case. As x approaches negative 6, we will get here negative 10 over negative 6 plus negative 5 is negative 11, but negative of that, positive 11. And so now we have a trivial case. As x approaches negative 6, the fraction approaches negative 10 over 11, and so this is our final answer negative 10 over 11. And so you see the original limit gave us a 0 over 0 indeterminate case, and yet both the numerator and denominator balanced each other out to give us a final answer of negative 10 over 11. So you see you have to be careful when you deal with a 0 over 0 case. Let's look at one more example.
So let's let now x approach positive 2, x to the 4 minus 16 over x squared plus x minus 6. As always, we look at our case. 2 to the 4 is 16, minus 16 is 0, over 2 to the 4, 2 to the 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6, minus 6 is also 0. So once again, we have an indeterminate case in the form of 0 over 0. Again, we have polynomials being 0 at 2, so we use the factor theorem. Both polynomials are 0 when x is 2, and so our free factor is x minus 2. So both polynomials are divisible by x minus 2. So again, we try and factor. Well, let's factor the easier one being the quadratic. We use again the sum product trick. Negative 2 times what is negative 6? That's positive 3. Let's check the sum. Positive 3, positive negative 2. So plus negative 2 is plus 1. Check. Now, what is the missing factor for our quadratic polynomial? It's not so clear, right? You can't just figure out the cubic factor here by inspection x minus 2 times some cubic polynomial will be x to the 4 minus 16. How do we find it? Well, we use long division. Think of it. We're saying this polynomial, x to the 4 minus 16, equals x minus 2 times some missing polynomial, say g of x. Well, if you want to isolate g of x, you have to cancel x minus 2 so you must divide both sides by x minus 2. And so g of x is simply x to the 4 minus 16 over x minus 2. And how do you divide polynomials? Using, of course, long division. So let's perform this long division, and then we'll go back and figure out the limit. So we are dividing x to the 4 minus 16 by x minus 2. So what times x is x to the 4? x cubed. Multiply all of this by x cubed, you get x to the 4 minus 2x cubed. We subtract. These cancel. Be careful here. Negative negative 2x cubed is positive 2x cubed. And of course the left over negative 16. And now we repeat. What times x is 2x cubed? Well, positive 2x squared. Multiply the whole thing here by 2x squared, you get 2x cubed. Negative 4x squared, we subtract. These cancel. Again, be careful, negative, negative 4x squared is positive 4x squared. Left over of negative 16. We repeat what times x is 4x squared? Positive 4x. Multiply out. 4x squared, negative 8x. We subtract. Again, these cancel. Negative, negative 8x. Positive 8x. And the leftover of negative 16. We repeat. What times x is 8x? Positive 8. 8 times x minus 2 8x minus 16. We subtract and we get 0. So we're done with the long division. So indeed, x minus 2 is a factor of x to the 4 minus 16. And the missing factor is this cubic polynomial. And so we now we have the factorization of x to the 4 minus 16. It is x minus 2 times this cubic polynomial. So we can go back up and replace x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4x plus 8. And now we're almost done. Once again, x is approaching 2, so x is very close to 2 but not exactly 2. And as x is never exactly 2, x minus 2 is never exactly 0. 
so we can cancel. And now we have a simpler limit. Again, we look at our case. As x approaches 2, 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, 4 times 2 is 8, so we get 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8, 32, over 2 plus 3, 5. So we have a 32 over 5 case. So we're done. As x is approaching 2, our fraction is now approaching 32 over 5. And that is our final answer. And so you can appreciate how, in the first example, we had a 0 over 0 case. The final answer was negative 10 over 11. In this second example, we still had a 0 over 0 case, and now the final answer is 32 over 5. So always be careful that when you have an indeterminate case in the form of 0 over 0, anything can happen. When you're dealing with polynomials being 0, the technique is to factor out the polynomials, since you have a zero, you have a free factor from the zero theorem. If it's a simple quadratic polynomial, you can factor easily by inspection using the sum and product trick. If it is a cubic or higher polynomial, you can factor using, of course, long division. And that's it.